common in. In the latest in our investigation into hidden children's homes, we hear more claims that kids under 16 are being abandoned by authorities in accommodation aimed at older children. I mean, there are people kicking off, there'd be glass all down the steps from people that had, you know, had fits and smashed things, and there are people that used to sit on the steps and self-harm. I've never felt more unsecure and unlooked after and unsupported, ever. How often were children hungry in that house? Every day. And we asked the company boss how he justifies charging councils £70,000 a month to house six teenagers in one property. Local authorities would not agree to pay something that they don't agree to. Unless they're desperate. Unless they're desperate. Anywhere else. But no, no, no one is holding them at a throat, a throat level. For months, we've been investigating what's called supported accommodation. It's used by councils to house vulnerable teenagers and caters for over 16s. Unlike official children's homes, in England and Wales, the sector isn't regulated. Now, the trail has led us here, to this house on a street in South Birmingham. We asked various councils to offer the children in care they've placed here the chance to talk to us, all refused. But we've found two, now aged 18 and out of care, only too keen to share with us the secrets of this house. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> oh, I miss you. Paige and Echo haven't seen each other for a year. We tracked them down and reunited them. <laughs> 16 and 17, when they lived in that property, they wanted to tell us about what happened inside. I was very excited for the move initially. I was, I was adamant to go there. And as soon as I got there, I spent my first few nights there and I tried to stay there as little as I humanly could. There were people kicking off, there'd be glass all down the steps from people that had, you know, had fits and smashed things. And there were people that used to sit on the steps and self-harm and the staff didn't really do anything about it. It was, you'll be all right, come on, stop this now. Paige shared with Newsnight a video she says shows another child's bedroom after that child had self-harmed. We're told the thin brown blanket on the bed is what the child used as a cover and a towel. That child is still in care, but we've spoken to her and others who lived here. She told us that for the first 10 days, she slept under that blanket and her coat until an adult friend bought her a duvet. She also says that sometimes in this house, she was so hungry that when she smelt the staff cooking their own meals, she'd come downstairs and beg them for food. She says they refused. The house was a good earner for Rodor Housing and Support, the company that ran it while the teenagers were there. We've established Pages Council, Walsall, paid £2,000 a month to keep her there. Echoes Council, Merton, paid £3,600 a month. They shared the house with a 16-year-old from Cumbria. That council, we understand, paid nearly £16,000 a month. Also inside, a 15-year-old from Hampshire, housed at a cost, we believe, to her local council of £18,000 a month. In the extension was a 15-year-old from London. Rodor charged his council around £22,000 a month. And the highest charge was for a child who appears to have cost Bromley Council more than £28,000 a month. The number of children in the house at any one time varied, but our research suggests that in a good month, Rodor could earn £74,000 in fees for just six children. Echo was in care when he moved in. Paige was deemed a child in need. Their councils put them into this unregulated accommodation, which is supposed to help teenagers aged 16 and over transition into independence. But as we've established, they were also living with under 16s. We've previously reported that local authorities do put younger teens into this type of accommodation, even though Ofsted says they shouldn't. Last week, Newsnight revealed the government has written to all council chief executives in England, saying it wants placements of under 16s in supported accommodation eliminated. That's because these homes aren't set up to offer children care, only support. Though Echo says in the Birmingham home, they didn't even get much of that. I've never felt more unsecure and unlooked after and unsupported ever. And due to being a child, I have a very difficult background. And for that to be my worst experience, it, it, says, it says a lot. Do you think that the under 16s were safe in that house? No.
The company, Rodor Housing and Support, operates out of a lettings agency in Birmingham. Much to our surprise, when we contacted them, the boss agreed to meet me. Mr. Gabula, hello, I'm Katie. Katie Hi, Katie. Hi. How are you? Very are nice you well? You. Yes, very, very well. Nice How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for having us to do an interview. Pleasure. Great. Pleasure. So this is where you? you run your empire? Well, it's not an empire really per se, but uh, it's a platform where we, we try and do the best we can for our vulnerable children. Mr Gabula told me he has around 20 supported accommodation properties in the West Midlands, some catering for under 16s. He wanted to take me to see one. Nice car. Yes. This is uh, one of our fleet vehicles that we utilise to uh, provide services to our vulnerable children. The kind of homes Mr Gabula runs aren't registered or regulated. When it comes to under 16s, whatever the government may say, with a lack of enough regulated provision and a squeeze on council budgets, Mr Gabula is filling a gap for local authorities. And putting younger children in these homes isn't illegal. You're certainly the first provider who has openly said to us, yes, I take under 16s, and has agreed to do an interview. Why, why did you agree to that, do you think? What's there to hide? When you are providing a service to vulnerable children, what's there to hide? So no one's living in here right now? Not at the moment, no. Uh, this accommodation is uh, pretty empty. Mr Gabula took me round a property he uses for under 16s. It's not the house where Paige and Echo lived. And how much do you charge councils for a place like this? Ah, uh, you're asking me a very interesting question and that I would not divulge because that's commercial sensitive information. It's got to be thousands though. Um, it's just like regulated provisions charge thousands. Costs and charges are always determined by the level of risk, the level of staffing input, and also placement outcomes to be achieved. And are you saying you don't put under 16s with old, older children in? We don't, we don't mix that. Contrary to our evidence, Mr Gabula insists his company's under 16s are housed in properties like this one, separate from older children and with their own team of support staff. Councils across England have placed children in road or properties. Since it started trading in 2014, the company's received more than £7 million to house looked after children, according to analysis done by the Open Contracting Partnership and the Spend Network for Newsnight. Supported accommodation isn't like a children's home, not just because it's unregulated. Staff aren't usually expected to cook for the children, who are also meant to budget for themselves, nor do they take them to school. But they should be available to help teenagers learn independence. Echo and Paige, though, paint a shocking picture of a home where children ended up looking after other children. So did you ever see them eating anything? When we fed them, yeah. And how old were those kids that you were feeding? About 15. How often were children hungry in that house? every day, whether that be because they didn't have the motivation to get up and cook and that's what they didn't eat, or whether it's that they've been asking for days on end to do a food shop and staff wouldn't allow it, or you know whether it be that they've done a food shop but they hadn't spent it on the right things and it's just been junk food and when the junk food had been gone there'd be no actual food left. But all in all I'd say, if not every day, most days. It's like the staff knew that they either, I weren't eating at all because they were choosing to spend their money on drugs or other things, or B, were aware that they weren't eating the right things and didn't really want to do anything about it. No kids in that place went to education. None of them. Not, not any of them were involved in college, in school, finishing their GCSEs, although they were all the ages they were supposed to. So even under 16s weren't going even to school? Even under 16s weren't in education. What were they doing all day? At home. They were just literally at home all day. Do you think that the under 16s were at risk? in that house? A hundred percent from people in the area that knew what the house was. I'd sit out the front on the wall having a cigarette and the amount of creepy men that would pull up outside and be like, oh, will you come with me? Or I'll, I'll, number. I'll come for a drive with me or oh, I'll get you a drink. And I think thinking that I was more vulnerable than what I really was until they got told 
on their way, basically. But I know that some of the other younger girls maybe did entertain conversations with some of them. Um, and it wasn't just one car, it was one after the other, after the other, maybe 10 in 10 minutes. Other homes in the area are also targeted by sexual predators, according to Marvin Gabula. And data protection rules, he says, prevent him from talking about some specific alleged incidents, such as those about children self-harming. But clearly there are other questions he should be able to answer. We showed him a picture of Paige and Echo's Rodor home. That's a property your company manages, I think. Yes. That is a 16 to 18 accommodation. So you're 100% sure there were no under 16s in that accommodation? Absolutely. Last Absolute. year? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why do you think it is that we've got more than one person saying that there were under 16s in that property? I, I, that, 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 that is a question for, for anybody to explain to me. Uh, people come up with all sorts of views and, and takes. Is it possible, as the boss, you didn't know that? You didn't know that there were under 16s in there? It would not be possible as the boss not to know because I am the one that when placements requests come through into my office, I authorise who goes where, who goes where. Whatever Mr Gabula says, we've established there were under 16s in Page and Echo's house. We've seen the significant events notification form about an assault involving two children in the home in October last year. We've redacted the date of birth, but it says one of those involved was 15. And we've seen an invoice putting a 15-year-old boy from London in that home. We understand Mr Gabula himself collected the child from hospital and drove him to the house when he moved in. We've also seen a complaint to one council that had placed a child in the home, detailing an occasion where there are no staff here. It talks of a 15-year-old girl in here left by herself. This is a very poorly run place, it adds. Local authorities are legally obliged to disclose how much they're paying providers and they have to publish that on a monthly basis. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we've looked at how much your company was getting last summer for that one house. So £2,000 a month from Walsall, £3,600 a month from Merton. Yes. £18,000 a month for Hampshire from, for that one house. Yes, that's correct. £20,000 a month from a London borough. I, I would need to go back and have a look, but quite clearly, those are costs that relate to specific needs. See, what we need to be, we understand here as well, Katie, is that a local authority paying for those services, those are services charged for the level of support, for mitigating the level of risk, and also for meeting the needs for those uh, vulnerable children. These higher sums might be reasonable if the children were receiving high-end one-to-one support, according to experts we've spoken to. Our evidence is that isn't what most of them were getting. It's not only road or housing and support who charges. You've got other bigger organisations than road or housing and support who probably charge an arm and a leg and we only just charge a fraction. Although £60,000 a month for one house does might sound to many people like an arm and a leg. Well, how much would the staffing cost cost? How much would be our overheads cost? How much would be our insurance for accommodating children with a history of arson cost? Local authorities would not agree to pay something that they don't agree to. Unless they're desperate. Unless, Unless they're desperate. Anywhere else. But no, no, no one is holding them at a throat, a throat level. You know, if, lo if local authorities want to look at varied options, they'll look at varied options. In the course of making this film, we've spoken to several young people who had good experiences in road or homes. So here is a typical bedroom. Um, Nottingham Council also told us it had put children in road or properties and had no concerns. Other providers, for them, is quick money. For us, it's making a difference. I'll leave this one, so I'll just show you something. Mr Gabula disputes some of the claims in this report. He says the company has a food bank for young people who fail to manage their money properly and tries to support them learning to budget. He said the company's flats are fully equipped with bedding and that the child who claimed to Newsnight that her duvet was bought by adult visitors had no such visitors. We've met them and they confirmed they bought the child a duvet after seeing her room didn't have one. Page and Echo's house is now closed. But Rodor is still operating around 20 other properties in this area. They're used by councils from other parts of England. But the local council, Birmingham, doesn't place children in Rodor homes anymore. Echo and Paige now live 200 miles apart. I do that. 
they miss each other, but not the home where they met and shared some difficult experiences. What do you think about the fact that the state put you and some under 16s in that house? I think that was wrong. I think we need to up their game a fair amount and actually look at what they're doing and how it's impacting people's lives. Cause I don't think they realise the severity of how bad it can mess up a child. Paige works full time in a bar now. She also has a baby. He's five months old. God forbid my son ever got taken from me and ended up in a supported accommodation. Like the thought that there's money going into places like this that are meant to support kids. The thought of him going hungry because he was that like, depressed, he didn't want to eat, or because he'd been asking for days on end to do a food. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's actually really upsetting the fact that if he was asking for days on end to go to do a food shop and they wouldn't allow him to do that and he was going hungry because of it. I mean, yeah, he's only five months old now, but think some of these young people, they're maybe 15 or 16, that's still somebody's daughter and that's still somebody's son that isn't able to eat the way they're supposed to because the staff didn't pull their weight.